Welcome to the show, welcome to the show, welcome to the show. And in this video, we're going to review the show called Blue Therapy. It's from London, England. So we're about to see what the family is getting into over there in the UK. So let's get into it. Episode 2 is starting off with your boy Paul and your girl Shioma on the couch. And already the first question, Paul is tight. Because the first question that the therapist asks is, how do you feel about Yoma being an influencer? And yeah, she's an IG model probably. And you know, us guys, we want those IG models, but when we get them, can we, can we really handle that? That's where your confidence comes in, because <laughs> he's talking about she don't handle herself properly. She don't do the right damage control. I mean, now he's, what are you, her father or her man? Because, you know, women want a man to take control, but you can't take control. You know what I mean? You can't take too much control. You can be assertive, but you can only do so much because she gonna do her thing with you or without you, you know what I'm saying? And along with him saying that she don't conduct herself properly online, now she's tight. I mean, cause that's how they met. <laughs> he saw her on Instagram. I mean, he slid in her DMs, he shot his shot and he got her. So now he thinking that same thing is gonna happen to him. You gotta be careful with this stuff, yo. So after Chioma calls him a liar, <laughs> right there in therapy, his example of not being appropriate is following her on Instagram, looking at all her stories, and just, you know, just taking stuff out of context, I believe, because, look, from an OG's perspective, social media can kill a relationship if you let it affect you like that. I mean, you met her on social media, you know that's what she does. Do you think that she would be that stupid to do something on social media when she know you stalking her stuff. <laughs> really? This is a, uh, I don't know, he, he is a grown man, but he has some growing up to do because he is trying to control this woman to no end and she ain't having it, man. <laughs> and yo, so like the old saying goes, if you looking for something, <laughs> you gonna eventually find it. So my dude need to stop looking at her at her Instagram all together. I mean, he's following her friends. He's looking at everybody's stories. And all she's doing is a sexy dance. I mean, yo, she is cute. She looks good. And you know that. So you got to know how to handle these pretty women if you want a pretty woman. You might as well go get somebody homely that don't like to do nothing, that don't look like nothing, that you ain't got to worry about. Because if you keep worrying about her, she going to definitely give you something to worry about every time so my man Paul need to chill he is on a hundred right now and then he's on camera talking about she's got that cute but bite me kind of kind of look to her like okay that's what you wanted though that's how you got her you got her she ain't gonna change for you she ain't gonna change for that like unless you making her your wife I don't know she might not still change I mean that's what she's doing that's how she get her pay by being an influencer I mean like slow it down son this is unattractive for women I mean you can't be jealous of your own woman you can't be hating and you can't be competing with your woman like you <laughs> he gonna lose this girl I'm telling you Paul is just sounding like an old ass dude right now and I know I'm older than him and <laughs> I even know what's going on. He's sounding all traditional and conservative, but that's not what he got. He got a modern woman, you know. It's not like back in the old days when they just gonna stay home and do nothing. You know, you gotta you gotta deal with this and just be happy, just enjoy each other. You are you are being too serious about a non-issue right now. Now, what I do like about Paul is how he cuts down the therapist. Like, he is so condescending to her. Like, she's explaining to her, like, you know, sometimes you may take a video or a picture and it may be taken out of context. And he's like, you know, a thousand, a picture paints a thousand words. And if you're educated like me and you know how to break that down, <laughs> like, who doesn't know what that term means? But 
he is like explaining to her like she a kindergartner when she's a therapist. That's this is this is classic. <laughs> it's like Paul. Well, he seemed kind of like paranoid. He's like, I know she's trying to do something. I know she's trying to play me. She's doing it. I know it. <laughs> so now we go back to Jamel and Deborah. And Jamel's talking about how he's been in uh, therapy before for over eight months. And he goes on to say that Deborah is questioning his manhood because he doesn't provide enough based on her expectations. And she is giving this dude the side eye. I mean, if looks could kill, he'd be at the morgue. He might even have an urn already. <laughs> I don't know about this couple. Cause like, like I said before, once you start off with all them expensive gifts to get her and you got her, what the hell you expect that she's gonna expect from now on? <laughs> like he's talking about how he got her a Gucci bag. And then the very next week, she was like, let's go to Greece for my birthday. And he's like, well, you know, that's expensive. And she's like, why can't we do both? And he's like, well, you know, I'm trying to buy a house. I'm trying to do this and that. And she's like, just like, well, that's how you came at me. So you better keep that up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I'm saying. You got a materialistic girl. You got to expect to do materialistic things. Like, I don't, I don't feel sorry for this guy, man. He is, uh, you know, if you want this girl, you got, that's what you got to do. Just, just suck it up and buy her all the stuff she wants. <laughs> and you just have your trophies. But, you know, if you want somebody of substance, you know, you got to, you got to look a little harder. Because she is just like, she is unbelievable, though. I'm, I'm really tripping on this. Man, they got young people problems. I mean, their whole fight is over social media. <laughs> and the fact that he says that she doesn't understand money or have a have value about money. I mean, you know, that's how you met her. So she says she grew, grew up as a princess, basically. So you have to keep that going if you want her. Like, you, you probably just incompatible now because you quantifying yourself and your profession and what you're doing and everything. And she busted you out. She's saying that Clubhouse don't really generate no revenue for him like that. So <laughs> they just both being disrespectful to each other. <laughs> like there's so much foolishness in this relationship going on. I don't even think this is real. I mean, she's on the camera talking about he know what kind of girl he got with. I want the Prada, the Louis, the Fendi's. Next thing I want him to do is get me a bucket hat of, of Givenchy or Fendi bucket hat or whatever. <laughs> And, and she is like just really going on about the kind of stuff she wants and what he need to do with her like you're my boyfriend no I think he's your bank <laughs> I mean and then the, the therapist asked uh, her what does it make you feel like when he gives you these gifts and I'm screaming a hoe <laughs> a prostitute <laughs> but nah she's like I feel like a princess cause my dad used to do it for me but, you know, some stuff I can see him doing, but why, when are you doing stuff for yourself? Just because he's your boyfriend, does that mean that you really need, like, he needs to take care of you like that? Like, get you gifts all the time? Don't you, you said you had a dad, that's what your dad do. Why don't you do it for yourself? I mean, are we really dependent on our, on a boyfriend for all of that stuff, for real? Like, you might as well get with a shake in Dubai or something. I mean, they're gonna shit on you, but at least you get all your all the stuff you want <laughs> and now we going back to Chioma and Paul and this is all about trust Paul don't trust her she trusts him you know it's all about like it don't matter what you're doing in the club you're coming back home to me and that's what attitude he needs to have it's funny that she got the attitude of course she don't really care <laughs> cause she know he coming back home he need to not care like that I mean, she says that he's out there popping bottles with the IG models hanging on him, dancing on him, and she don't get like that. So he need to take a page out of her book. But Paul, he got some good ones. Like I can see, I can see the attraction for women now because he got that assholey thing going on that women like. Because <laughs> he's like just a total asshole sometimes, especially to the therapist. Like. 
she asked him like you have women and, and champagne and everything around you and he's like yeah let me tell you why because if I'm with these affluent clients and with these rich and wealthy people am I gonna be at the bar <laughs> and it's the therapist is like I don't know so he's like well let me explain it to you it's like man he has no filter like he just talked to whoever <laughs> he's paying for this joint though he is paying for this therapy but he is not getting any help <laughs> so yeah Paul is funny I mean all he's doing right now is he's explaining the basic thing of you know if you got clients you're trying to get new clients you gotta wow them you gotta woo them you know you gotta like it helps to have the beautiful girls you know around you to make you look like you the shit and all that stuff we get it Paul but he is just explaining this stuff and it just it's just not it's not matching to the issues at hand like he's just explaining himself he's explaining away but it's not doing anything good for their relationship you know you got to give you got to take give and take you know that's what a relationship is you know but he's setting the standards but she's just kind of like I mean she's respectful she's appropriate but he's making it seem like he got a hood chick she ain't hood or she ain't acting hood so I think he got a good one he just is tripping though so Chioma's starting to say what I'm thinking it's like why do you have to go to the club to woo these clients I mean you can take them to dinner <laughs> that's just what she said you can take them to dinner you can take just you and that person to the pub you can go on a golf course I mean it's it's crazy like how he's justifying all this stuff but you know I'm a man I was young I've done it before so I get it I get it but this stuff just ain't flying in front of two women like you can't get nothing over two women in a therapy session it's just a no win it's a zero-sum game and if you do win and that's a perceived win so Paul needs to just stop thinking that he's the smartest person in the room <laughs> and just listen. So yeah, Paul is just steadily sticking his foot in his mouth. I mean, he is pulling the old double standard. You know, what's good for me is not good for you. And you know, they catching on and he's, his voice is getting, you know, really high pitched. And uh, yeah, sometimes you just gotta shut up. And Paul needs to do just that. Just shut up, man. <laughs> So now we back to Jamel and Deborah again. And the question to her is, how would you want him to treat you? And basically she says, by getting me expensive gifts. I mean, <laughs> poor dude. Like this dude is 27 years old and she's talking like she's a 50 year old woman that's been married to this guy for like 35, 40 years. Expensive gifts? I mean, how much money is this dude really pulling in? I mean, honestly, like, for real, <laughs> this is this is weird. And then she just keeps it going. She's like, if you want me to look good, you'll do it, basically. <laughs> like, it, it's a cost. It's a premium for me to look good. And you got to pay that premium, bro. Like, <laughs> dude, I think you need to you need to find somebody else. This this chick is just ridiculous right here. And from an OG's perspective, they don't have the same values like they just don't see eye to eye on money on you know building on re the whole relationship like they are not in the same space right now she's 24 he's 27 he's looking at building saving you know having a foundation family probably and she seems like she's just in it for the now you know she's 24 like why is she I doubt she's ready to settle down like that like he's almost 30 so of course he thinks that you know he needs to start doing this stuff for a family now and she's like she's just trying to have fun you know she wants to be with him but she is like saying that he is like not he is not looking at the big picture he's saying she ain't looking at the big picture she's saying that he's not realistic these people are, <laughs> these people are just man she she needs to find her a rich old sugar daddy. That's what she needs. But 
she does bring up some good points though. I mean, for this woman who is 24 and never had a real relationship until now, she does bring up the fact that you set the standard at the beginning of the relationship and you got to keep that going. I do agree with that, sister. I do agree with that because you got to, yeah, if you start taking them out, you giving them gifts, you got to keep it going. That's the way it is. And she also said, like, if you can't attend to that, you can't attend to a woman's needs, and you can't keep it going, then get your money up before you start dating. <laughs> she actually said that. Like, for real. Like, yeah, men shouldn't be dating when they trying to get to where they're going, when they're trying to build, when they're trying to get to that, to that one, to that status. You know, you got to have your shit together and then you start, you know, dating, getting women like that, you know, getting in a relationship. So she is totally right about that. And he don't understand that. He don't get it because he has some kind of uh, traditional sense about women and about relationships. So but he didn't reckon getting with somebody like her was going to have him in all this, <laughs> all this mess where he got to keep on spending money spending money when he's trying to save money and build and at the same time uh jamel is acting way more mature and older than he is like he's acting way more baller than he is he's like oh yeah she wants the flashy glitz and glamour the fast life i've been there done that dude you 27 <laughs> how much have you done i mean seven years worth eight years worth I mean, you, you still ain't at the point where you want to be. You don't have a house yet. You don't have, you know, your, your retirement accounts. I mean, you, you haven't even got to your 30s yet. I mean, that's a whole different story. You got your 30s and your 40s. I mean, you can have a wife and have kids when you get 50, 40, you know, 35. Like, you just acting, you just you're being too extra right now, bro. And now we back to uh, Paul and Chioma. So the question is, do you trust her? He says, yeah. She's like, you lie. <laughs> and then she says she trusts him, but you know, she's she's given the uh, old, you know, uh, not a threat, but like a passive aggressive thing, you know, that females do. <laughs> so it's like, you're gonna end up losing. He, she tells him straight up, like, I don't want you to get to the point where you regret losing your woman. <laughs> and that's what's going to happen. Like, when they say that, fellas, listen. Like, they don't say that just to say it. Like, when they say that, they serious. Like, you may think it's a joke. They ain't joking. If they say, hey, this is not a threat, but, you know, you could end up losing your woman. And how would you feel? Or something to that effect. Bro, this shit is serious. <laughs> And this is the thing with social media. So a lot of people are attention driven. And if you monitor your girl's social media and she posts a picture that's beautiful that you like and she has any kind of male people on her friends list, they're gonna comment and you can't get upset. Like the love struck eyes. Like his whole thing is the emojis and the comments they put under her pictures. Which is like, I mean, you got a pretty girl, so that's going to happen. Even if she's not that pretty, men are going to comment. So don't, why even concern yourself? Like, this, this is, a, it's just a losing battle. <laughs> like, he has got, he is so, like, just insecure about this whole thing. Like, social media, social media. Like, I don't want to know what's going on. Like, I'm not even going on your page. If your picture comes up, I'm going to like it, but I'm not going to, like, look at the comments. I don't want to see it. But at the end of the day, you with me, and we sleep together, we in the same bed, we in the same room, we under the same roof, and all that stuff, so, you know, it really don't matter to me what other people say, but, you know, that's how, you know, you know how you met her, <laughs> so if you mess up, there's a chance that somebody else is going to meet it that same way, so, if it was up to, you know, if it's up to you, you need to just straighten up and fly right, <laughs> and Paul got this thing. He, he be messing with this therapist so much. He be, he be like, answer the question. Answer the question to the therapist. Dude, you in therapy, she's supposed to ask you questions. Like, why would you waste your time and money asking her questions? This this dude is he is some he is a character. He is funny. 
But the thing is, you know, Tioma, she ain't doing nothing bad. Like, I've seen worse. You know, she ain't posting. She ain't doing booty shots. She ain't twerking. She ain't posting nothing real revealing. I mean, actually, she seems kind of agreeable and pretty cool. I don't know. I don't know what the problem is. There's one thing to take from this is that black men can also be a Karen. I mean, we can be a black male Karen because if I'm asked, if I'm getting asked by a therapist a question, I'm gonna turn it around and say, do you think that's necessary? Answer the question. <laughs> this guy, oh man, he cracks me up. And this Jamel and Deborah couple, I mean, geez, it's hard to even watch because Deborah, she just shows her age every time she opens her mouth. So Jamel and Deborah are getting kind of catty, and they they both showing their age, as a matter of fact. But the shot heard around the world was <laughs> when Jamel asked Deborah, "What do you bring to the table?" Ooh, man, these couples are ridiculous, really. Boy, Deborah's just ten toes down on this. Um, yeah, I think I can do more, but. I'll do that after you get the house. So until you don't get you don't get that house, this is what you get. <laughs> so I don't even know why he's with her. Like he don't need to be with nobody right now. And back to Chioma and Paul. Like they are having a full-fledged fight in front of this therapist. And they are getting so catty where they are mimicking each other, acting like each other, and mimicking one another. And just as I thought. Inevitably, the fight just blew out of proportion. Paul is looking like a bull with the steam coming out of his nose. He, he, I don't even know what, what they were fighting about. Like, I lost track of what they were fighting about because Paul's just talking and surf. But anyway, he gets mad. He finally says, this is bullshit. You're wasting my time. And he walks out. <laughs> he just smooth walks out of there and... She almost like, just like, what the hell just happened? <sighs> this show has got me just like, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Now we back to Deborah and uh, Jamel. And Deborah's idea of her man looking after her is buying her gifts. So after Jamel talks about how much controlling Deborah is and how that needs to stop and how she tries to pick out his clothes and how he can't do anything on his own and she tries to control his social media. He just grabs his bag and he smooth walks out. So <laughs> what is going on with these guys on this show? Oh man. <laughs> too much. This show is too much. And then now Chioma finally, you know, goes after Paul. And she admits he is a pompous, arrogant asshole. And that's not hard to believe because that's all we saw in their whole therapy session. And then we got Jamel out there in the hallway. He's like, I'm done. He's like, he's tired of the disrespect. And I don't think he's done, though, because he, 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 he came this far. He ain't done. Okay, so this show ends with Paul in the hallway, Chioma's in the hallway trying to calm him down, trying to get him to go back into the therapy session. But anyway, I, I, I just can't with this show. I can't. I just can't wait until the next episode. Like, it's like a car crash. I can't stop watching. Like, I don't need to watch it, but I got to see what happens. I don't know. That, I, okay, so that's it. That's my uh, commentary, my thoughts, my opinions on Blue Therapy Episode 2. This show is a trip. This episode was a trip. So I'll see you guys next week for more commentary on Blue Therapy Episode 3. Please like, subscribe, and share the video. And thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next week.